interrupt each other. <laughs> I am going to be recording this session. I just want to let you all know that, that we are going to be recorded. And if your parents couldn't be here or if they want to see this, it will be available to them. If you, um, once we give the admissions office all your names, they will in fact send out an email that um, has the link so that you can share this recording or any other information with your family members. Right. And I believe also if you complete the, that form to let them know you were there, it waves, does it waive the application fee, Dr. Pappas? She there's said some, if you... There's some sort of gig or you can click on that um, within the survey to, to waive that fee. Right. So are you guys all seniors? No. All right. Planning ahead. Um, so I can only see half of you now. Kaylin, you're a junior? I would have. Yes, I am. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So definitely planning ahead. Um, all right. So this is a picture of our current health science building where most of our graduate coursework is, is occurring right now, as well as in a tent behind the building right now with COVID going on. We've done some creative scheduling and, and arranging our spaces. So we have all kinds of, of different teaching spaces right now. Our program has been accredited for over 25 years and we converted to, from a master's degree program to the doctor of physical therapy program in 2008. So we've been around for quite a while and um, feel very comfortable and have seen a lot of success in our students. So our undergraduate program is considered a six year accelerated bachelor's to doctoral program, meaning that in six years, you will complete two different degrees. Um, the first three years, you're going to complete most of your undergraduate work, and then the final three years are graduate work. And what sets us apart a little bit is that we don't require a secondary admission process, that if you're accepted right from your first year, that goes all the way through all six years as long as you complete all of our required coursework and satisfy any academic requirements. Um, and those requir requirements are maintaining a B average throughout your undergraduate or at the end of your graduate program. You've got to have that B average. All right, so our undergraduate program is considered our health science pre-PT program. So in your first year in college, you're going to take basic sciences such as biology and chemistry. You're going to complete um, a core curriculum, which all students on the campus complete. There's different areas that you um, take coursework in, such as um, ethics and cultural awareness and literary studies so that you actually are, are doing more than just physical therapy related work. We find that that creates a nice, well-rounded um, student and, and it gives you a little bit more background than just focusing on the requirements that we put at you. Students will also choose a minor and usually the minor is about 15 credits so that's five or six courses that you would take in an area of specialization. And right now, I believe there's around 30 minors and it could be anything from business to public health to psychology. And we encourage our students to pick something that they're interested in and that they enjoy that coursework to delve into a different facet of um, education. All right. My computer doesn't like when I move the cursor around. Our second year, you're continuing with basic sciences and the core curriculum and definitely choosing a minor. Again, your choice in that. Um, we have the sequence of sciences gets a little bit more um, in depth in year two and starts getting, starts having students be more prepared for graduate school. 
In year three, our students will complete their minor. They'll complete all of the core curriculum requirements. Um, at this point, students, if they're interested in if and when this program continues to be an opportunity for our students to either travel abroad or I know right now I have a student who's um, minoring in Spanish and in order to complete that minor typically students had to travel to Spain and immerse themselves in the Spanish um, language and culture and my students being it has been able to arrange coursework virtually, so he will be attending classes in Spain from his dorm room at Springfield College in the spring. So again, trying to be creative and, and help students get these experiences that they're really interested in. We also have three courses that are taught by physical therapy faculty in the third year. And that's our healthcare language, the physical therapy professional, and physical therapy and healthcare research skills. And again, these courses are really geared to start preparing students for their graduate program because at the end of year three, students are um, entering into the graduate program and we actually start the graduate program in the summer. So again, at the end of year three, there's an academic review where we look at, did you take all the required courses? Is your GPA ready? Um, have you completed 106 credits? Because you have to take a certain number of credits to be eligible to graduate with your bachelor's degree at the end of year four. Our grade requirements are for a cumulative GPA of a 3.0 which is a B, and we have a little bit higher requirement for our prerequisite courses, and that includes the biology, chemistry, physics, anatomy, physiology, um, our three required PT courses, and a couple of other uh, math course, and um, a psychology course. So all of those grades go into that prerequisite GPA, which has to be at a 3.3. Uh, summer of year four, we start with our foundational sciences, our human anatomy, um, our neurosciences labs and courses. Um, and, and at the end of year four, you would receive your bachelor's degree. You would have completed all that undergraduate work. We also start integrated clinical experiences. And these are another thing that sets us apart from some programs that from the very beginning, our students are going out into the physical therapy world, uh, going to different clinical sites and are working with therapists in those sites and working with clients that are in, in the um, site for physical therapy. So you're seeing I call them real patients, but we don't often have fake patients, but you're going to see people that really are in need of physical therapy services and be part of providing services from the first year that you join us. And our students are out um, typically for a half a day, once a week, all semester. So it's really a nice experience to get students engaged and applying their knowledge and skills. For instance, I teach human anatomy and I also supervise students out in a clinical site. So they know when my client says they have shoulder pain, then I'm gonna start asking them why, what's in that shoulder? What do you know about the shoulder? Tell me about the anatomy of the shoulder. So we're able to start integrating what they're learning in the classroom and applying it to patients out in the clinic. And that continues through um, the first and second year before students are going out in their full-time clinicals. So in year five, we really focus on the treatment approaches to the different systems. For instance, how do I treat someone with cardiovascular disease or a neurological condition or a musculoskeletal joint condition? So really the students have had all the foundational information and now we're learning different treatment approaches. We also start um, our evidence-based practice and research project. So students in small groups are doing research together 
and developing a um, answer to a research question. And the other course that I somehow keep leaving out of this presentation is throughout the whole graduate component is a professional practice, practice management sequence of courses. So not only are you learning how to teach and treat patients, you're also learning what does it take to run a clinic? What's going on in healthcare that I need to pay attention to? How do I make sure I'm doing ethical um, billing and coding and, and all of the things that go into the business component of being in a physical therapy practice? And our integrated clinical experiences continue. Again, that half a day once a week where the students are out in the clinic practicing all, all of the new techniques they're learning and applying that. Year six, look how fast you've done six years of college, right? It was the fastest six years. Flies ever. by. <laughs> um, students are pretty much done all of their classroom learning. They're out in the clinic on their three full-time clinical education experiences. So students are out working as anyone that goes to work every day, 40 hours, sometimes more. Um, Not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unpaid, unpaid clinical experiences. So you're gonna be working side by side with a therapist in the clinic doing full-time physical therapy. Um, and our students do three different clinical experiences. And since Dr. Barrett is one of our clinical education faculty, I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about how that's arranged and, and some of the opportunities students have. Yep, so we have um, a three 10-week clinical experiences. They're after all of the coursework. So there are some other programs, if you're exploring physical therapy, have full-time clinicals spattered throughout the coursework. We've chosen to do it at the end. That way you've had, you have your whole knowledge base behind you and you can move forward and integrate everything you've learned in full-time practice. We have students do um, one in a general outpatient orthopedic setting. We have students do a second one in working with some kind of um, medically complex patient, whether that means in a hospital, in a rehab center, in a subacute rehab center, maybe in home care. Um, and then the third one is one of the student's choice um, as far as a setting. You could choose to do you know, a more specialized setting. We've got um, like some sports, some golf related settings. We've got some pediatric settings. We've got, um, we've got one you know, with a group of um, dancers, like the focus of the practice is um, orthopedic dance related injuries. Um, so we've got some specialty things out there. We've got some neurological specialty settings. We've got some Parkinson's um, settings. So we kind of allow the student to kind of explore something that they might want to do for their final placement, or at least for one of the three. And it doesn't matter which order because they're all, you've already had all of your coursework, so you can really do anything at that point. Um, we pride ourselves in our matching process in that we really get to know all of the students in the program over the three professional years because we're working with everyone in their integrated clinical experiences. So we get to figure out what kind of a learner you are, what's your personality, what's your communication style. And we have very good relationships with all of our clinical partners so we can do you know, a, a good match as far as is the student matched with the right setting, given the culture of the setting? Are they with the right clinical instructor who's going to communicate with them in such a way that's going to improve um, their learning? Um, so we really pride ourselves in that matching process to make sure that our students get everything they need when they're out in clinical. Thank you. You're welcome. And then once the students are finished with their clinical rotations, they do come back to campus for the final four to six weeks of the semester. And at that point, students are completing their research. They do research presentations to the faculty and to the other students in the program. Um, some of our community partners will 
join us for those research presentations. Um, and then we help students prepare for the national exam, the um, NPTE or the National Physical Therapy exam. Um, and all students have to take and pass that exam at the national level before that you can work um, in your job as a PT. So again, I think um, Dr. Barrett covered most of this, that we have three different distinct settings. We have clinical sites up and down the Northeast region, down to Florida, out to the Southwest. So again, a lot of different opportunities for students to branch out. Um, one of the things that we do let, have to let students and families know is that there's often additional costs for this um, part of the education. As far as students living in a different part of the country, obviously you would have to pay for your housing or transportation. And especially right now, I'm pretty sure most of you are aware there's this pandemic thing and extra testing needs to be done. And that cost also comes to the students and families for most of any health related requirements such as immunizations um, or additional testing. And we try to be mindful and keep students, you know, maybe near the Springfield area for one of them, near their home base for another clinical and then traveling for a third. So we try to be mindful. There are some students who wanna be away and, and don't mind and can travel for all three. Um, so we do get to know you over the, the years and figure out what's gonna be a good match. And are you someone who wants to be away or do we need to keep you closer to home for some reason due to a sick family member or what have you? So typically we can work with you on those. Things. I think one of my favorites, because I was checking in with my students who are out doing their full-time experiences in the last week, is mm -hmm. one of the students is actually living in a different student's <laughs> family's house because that student's not at home. So there's some yeah. family swapping going on, and, yeah. and it's a really reasonable way to cut some of those expenses. Right. And I will say the students get to know each other so well, they all feel like family members at that point in time by the end of the program. So it's kind of a nice Absolutely. thing to hear and to listen to because the students are, are very grateful to have any of those costs cut. That's true fact. Yep. It was just one of those things that came up in my chats with the students this week. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of it, especially with the pandemic right now, it's harder to find housing. Like normally we have a great alumni association who houses students and they are great, but there are many kind of standby folks that we would normally use that can't have a student in their home if they're in and out of a hospital and potentially, you know, bringing infection or whatever into the house with, you know, family members who may be impaired or at risk, so. All right, so some other things that um, we think are really important and part of our program and part of our mission and philosophy is our service learning. So we really try to work with our local community and provide services that enhance the care for community members that might not otherwise have as much access to care. Um, and, and in a non-COVID year, we would have clients on campus. Uh, we have a stroke exercise group where you can see that's what's going on in both of these pictures. People that have had a stroke uh, might have some paralysis on one side of their body or have difficulty moving, come into our clinic on campus twice a week and have free treatment by our students. We also um, broaden that out to international travel when we are able. We've been to Trinidad and Tobago and to Haiti mm -hmm. to provide, oh, and to Germany to provide services to some underserved communities and those trips, students travel with faculty and are immersed in those countries and in communities providing care. We are also fortunate to have a partnership with an alum of the program who has opened up a practice on the campus of Springfield College. 
And that is another site for um, not only physical and occupational therapy services to students, staff, and faculty, but also a, a place for our students to do some of their clinical experiences. So students don't have to travel far. They have opportunities to um, see patients in this clinic and provide some community services through that clinic. Additionally, some exceptional experiences and things that we really want our students to be involved in is leadership opportunities. Um, students can be part of varsity sports or choose to do club sports. We want you to get involved in the Springfield College undergraduate community. We also, as I said, when able, um, we are able to squeeze in some study abroad so students can continue to, to expand their knowledge and experiences. And again, at the graduate level, we have our weekly clinical experiences, our service learning, and some global health experiences. These are just some pictures of our students doing some of that global health and um, I love that study abroad and different athletes that have been involved in the sports on campus. So we're really happy that our students can, can just do a whole array of different activities and still continue into the physical therapy program. Mm -hmm. Another area that we have on campus is our simulation lab and you can see the mannequin in those pictures. <laughs> Not your normal department store mannequin. If um, you've ever seen a simulation lab, the mannequin um, is completely wired to all sorts of different monitors. Um, we, the room that you see on the right hand upper corner is set up as a hospital room. So it is set up just like a intensive care unit where there's monitors and oxygen and they could, students can run an IV. The mannequin is microphoned on the left-hand upper picture. You can see faculty in the um, control room. The war room. The war room. <laughs> <laughs> so they're behind the one-way mirror. This is like the Wizard of Oz amped up. Um, and the faculty control this screen that will change the mannequin's heart rate. It can change the breathing. Um, the mannequin um, is talk. microphoned to a person in the control room. So from the control room, you can speak to the students, which is my favorite part and the students least favorite because it's a little bit creepy when one of our voices comes out of a mannequin in a bed. But it allows us to do some high stakes type interventions and in learning that a student might be a little bit, uh, I don't wanna say freaked out, but all right, maybe freaked out to walk into an intensive care unit and see their first patient with all sorts of wires and tubes and things coming in and out of them. So we're able to do those experiences using the simulation mannequin um, and have students practice without any risk to a patient and to get over some of their discomfort with us being able to help them through that. That is the most fun. Um, so a little bit about the faculty. There are 10 of us. We are experienced across different arrays of physical therapy. Um, we are full-time faculty, so our, our main focus is in teaching and education. However, some of us do some clinical hours and we have several board certified specialists, meaning they've done some advanced training and um, are recognized in the field as experts in the area of, for instance, Dr. Barrett is a wound care specialist. Um, we have a couple of orthopedic clinical specialists, a neuromuscular clinical specialist, a geriatric Specialist. So we have a pulmonary. Yep. So we have a wide array of, again, interests and experiences. And we, as I said, we're committed to teaching. 
And another unique aspect of our program is we are your advisors from the time you start that first year, you come during the summer and have an experience with us um, first time as a whole group in our summer new student orientation program. And it's an opportunity to meet faculty, meet advisors, and for us to get to know you from that first moment you enter the door. We also use adjunct faculty when we need their expertise in different areas. For instance, pediatrics, we don't have a clinical specialist in pediatrics, so sometimes we'll bring in uh, clinicians from the community that have special expertise and training to help us teach our students in our labs. And we're really proud that our student ratio for our clinical courses or our lab courses is 13 students to one faculty. And that gives us the opportunity to really work one-on-one -on -one with students to assure that the education you receive is, is, is as intense or not intense as, as it needs to be. So again, we encourage our students to get engaged with activities on campus. We like to see students that are, want to build their leadership schools, skills, whether that's through service or governance or student activities. We have 26 varsity teams that students are involved in. Um, and that doesn't count intramurals or club teams, which there are probably hundreds of them. And again, that ability to study abroad. So at this point, right, this is where usually families want to know, okay, but how do the students do at the end of all of this? And we're very excited to say that our ultimate pass rate for our students graduating from the GPT program is 100%. Um, we haven't finished getting all of the final data for our most recent graduating class, but every other class year we've been at 100%. All of our students are employed within six months of passing that exam. And um, we're really happy with that information and knowing that when you finish after six years of, of tough work, you will be able to get a job in the realm of physical therapy. So now you're thinking, all right, I wanna go, I am in. What are we looking for from our admissions committee? Uh, we want a well-rounded person, right? We, we want students that are sound academically, that have a good base education, meaning that you've taken four years of science and maths, that you have a GPA that is over a 3.0, and that most of your grades are B plus or better. We um, encourage students to take honors courses or um, AP coursework, and those courses weigh heavier than just maybe a college level or pre-college level college preparatory course. Um, we're looking at class rank. If your school does that, I know many do not, so it doesn't matter if it, you don't have a ranking system, but we're looking at the top 10 to 20% of the class. We're looking at SAT scores of 550 on math and critical reading or 24 to 26 in the ACTs and a minimum of 10 hours of PT observation or volunteer experience with documentation from a clinic or on letterhead. And there's a lot of asterisks there because this year is pretty um, unique in the fact that it, it's difficult um, to be able to sit for the SATs or the ACTs and it's difficult to get into a clinic for observation hours. So with that in mind, we have for this year become an SAT, ACT optional um, college. So those are not required. And knowing that many students cannot get into um, a clinic, a clinic to, to, to get 
observation or to see what goes on in the clinic. But we've added a question in the Common App to, for you to be able to talk to us or to write about how the changes brought about by COVID-19 have impacted your ability to meet these requirements. And what, what does that mean um, as far as your admission to our program? The other thing that we're encouraging is for students to go to the American Physical Therapy Association website and um, look at material they have posted, particularly for students that talk about careers in physical therapy um, and, and what is physical therapy besides treating patients. If I did a, a survey, I would bet many of you have had an experience with physical therapy, whether it's your own personal experience after an injury or um, a family member who's had physical therapy. But what we really want is for students before you commit to six years to really understand there's more to physical therapy than just treating patients. And, and that's a really important concept um, that these videos and um, the website shows really well. If you do get into doing some shadowing, this shadow hour log is found on our admissions homepage. So you can download that if that helps. If you have already done it and you have a letter that says you did that in a clinic, then you can either mail that in or send that to your admissions counselor and they will put that with your application when you do apply. All right, there's some deadlines coming up month away. So December 1st is our absolute all PT applicants must apply. Um, I have to look at my phone now because I, I, I don't recall what day December 1st is. Oh, it's a Tuesday. So you have to submit that application by December 1st. And if you are going to apply for early decision, which means that you absolutely, Springfield College is your number one choice. And if you're accepted, you're coming. Um, we make our decisions. We move those students to kind of the top of the review pile. Um, and those decisions are made by February 1st. And then everyone else that you may be applying to two or three different colleges, um, we make all of our final decisions by March 15th so that students know um, well in advance whether they've been accepted or not. All right, we do have a Facebook page. We post activities and things that are going on in the program. So if you want to see some of the, the fun stuff we've been doing, um, keep up with what's going on. And at this time, I will take questions. Hi again. Hi, um, can I ask something? Sure. Hi. Um, so I've been um, volunteering in a um, physical therapy um, corporation. And I've been talking to my physical therapist. And he is willing to um, write me a letter of recommendation. Um, would I be able to submit that to the program? Yes. You would, you would be able to send that directly to the um, undergraduate admissions office. Good, great Thank you. question. Other questions? Um, if someone isn't accepted in, the, the, in their first year, are there, is, there, is there a chance they can get accepted year two or three other in school? So that's another really good question. So there is sometimes the opportunity. So we are accredited by a national accrediting body for physical therapy programs. And we are accredited for only 45 students each class year. So if we have less than 45 students, we will accept students that transfer in um, typically starting with students that are on our campus versus students from outside of the campus. So if there is space available, the answer is yes. Now I can tell you right now, um, last September, seems so long ago, but it was only a few months ago, 
um, we have a class that is over 50 students. So there is no space for students to transfer in right now. Now, if a bunch of students were to leave campus and we got below that number of 45, then we would allow students to transfer in. Great question, Matthew. All right, what else? Anybody wanna know what it's like on our campus from a student's perspective? Like do students stay? Do the students go home every weekend? What goes on? Um, I, I actually have a question. Um, oh, go ahead. Sir. Um, so when I, um, I've been looking into the um, track and field program in um, team in um, Springfield as well. And as an athlete, I just wanna know what, what um, do you, do you guys often have athletes like, and how do they say they manage the time between the physical therapy program and their sport? Another great question. So yes, students do manage being um, varsity athletes from mm -hmm. many different sports. Um, and I, what I often will tell students and their families is how do you manage your time now? I'll bet you are either up before, if you're a swimmer, you're usually up at the crack of dawn swimming, or if you're playing hockey, you're up at 4 a.m. getting to a rink. Um, or right after you get out of school, you're going to meets or you're doing training and doing all that and then fitting in homework all around that. Um, the same thing happens in college, right? It, 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 you have to be very structured. Um, again, as faculty and as your advisors, we, we watch how you're doing. So if we find that you're having trouble balancing the, the requirement for both, then we'll help students to make decisions of whether it's too much or maybe changing a little bit of how they're um, going through the program. So it's absolutely doable. I would say most of our students very successfully go through the first three undergraduate years. Sometimes year four is a little more difficult because now it's a graduate school curriculum. So it's a little bit harder. There's more time needed for studying and practicing skills and learning all of the physical therapy knowledge. Um, and sometimes we have courses later in the day because, as I said, we sometimes bring in specialists to teach. And often those specialists have their regular day PT job and come and teach like a 5 to 7 p.m. class. So that's a little bit harder to juggle with athletics. But certainly there have been, I'm going to say, hundreds of students that have done it successfully. And then there are other students that have said, nope, I, I'm, I'm going to be done with my um, varsity sport because, again, we are a Division three school, meaning you're not getting any scholarship money. Um, likely, most students are not going to a major league kind of recruiting sports program after this. So we, we help the students come to the best decision for them. Right. And that being said, too, the coaches are aware when students are in the physical therapy program, there may be some days, right, where, you know, I have this thing, I can't make practice this day. They work with us on that. But again, it's, you have to make a choice of, you know, what's your priority sometimes. Good, good. What else? What else? So on campus, right, most students live on campus. We have a very small commuter population. Um, just kind of throw that out there for our Springfield folks. Thank you for bringing me back. <laughs> Thanks for wrapping me back around. Um, so, and the college community is pretty tight knit. Like every, it's a small college. People get to know each other very well. You will know pretty much everyone in your incoming class by mm -hmm. your second year. Um, students tend to hang around on campus on weekends. There are always athletic activities. They do um, events in the evenings. They'll bring in special music guests or activities to engage students to be doing community stuff 
with each other. Um, they'll do like a paint night or there's this thing that goes on and it baffles my mind because when I say it, you're all going to be like, what? But it's late night bingo. It starts at midnight and they have prizes like 40 inch TV screens and, and, you know, printers and, and all these great prizes, you know, food, food waiver coupons and, and all kinds of things. And, and it's apparently very popular. <laughs> very I, pop had I had never heard of it. I was like, what is this? <laughs> right. Right. So, so they try to really have students stay on campus, be involved, um, have fun, because that's what college should be as well as learning stuff. You should still have fun. What else? I'm sorry, what, uh, what date did you say the application is due for uh, PT? December 1st. December 1st, all right, thank you. You're okay. welcome. Um, and again, Jonah, thank, thanks. Thanks for that question and for me to remind you all that um, you will all get an email that will give you a link to this recorded presentation so that anything you want to go back to, you'll be able to go back to that. Um, it'll be a YouTube link from our admissions department. Mm -hmm. And the two links that they've posted will also make sure if you want to, um, if you click on those links, you'll be able to also get your information to our admissions office in case there, anything comes up and you want additional information, they'll reach out to you. And the links are in the chat as well. Jonah, if you came in later, I'm gonna post them into the chat again, because I'm told now that if you come in at a different time, you don't get the same chat that everyone else gets. You missed the beginning. Yeah, I came in like 30 minutes late. I was just uh, wrestling practice. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. No worries. We don't we don't judge here. This yeah. is <laughs> judge free zone, but I just happening. reposted the two links in the chat for you, Jonah. We're casual because that's a small group tonight. Yeah. 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 This is my favorite way to do open house. Huh? You know, when there's yeah. 40 people, I can't keep track. This is really nice. Yeah. 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 Good. Other questions for us. Hi, um, I have another question. Sure. Um, how has COVID affected the program? Like, um, are you able to have like all the students um, learning in the facilities or is it virtual at all? Well, Paul, <laughs> you win on that troubling question. Winner, winner. <laughs> Just last week, um, yeah. so the college has been super, super um, careful and um, mindful of keeping all of us safe. So from the beginning of the semester, students were on a scheduled every two weeks, all of our students living on campus and even our commuters are all yeah. tested for COVID. Um, and that happens right on campus. It's like, yep, I have a break at noon. I'm going to get my COVID test. Um, yeah. And we have been doing uh, according to the governor of Massachusetts, we're following the state guidelines. That's the first guideline we follow. Um, we are fortunate to have many very educated faculty in the realm of public health and um, infection and safety. So we have an entire team who monitors every week exactly what is going on. Um, we had a spike in cases middle of last, last week, week. Like Wednesday, Thursday, something. And um, on Friday, students were given the choice to leave campus and do the rest of the semester uh, remotely or stay on campus. But we had stopped, we stopped our face-to-face -face courses just to make sure that we were stopping any spread that might be occurring on campus. So, most students in the undergraduate program have gone home. We were planning to go remote for our November Thanksgiving 20th, break yeah. for the rest of the semester. So that ended two weeks early for our students. Um, however, our students that are in the graduate program 
and some of the other uh, programs on campus that need to really do hands-on face-to-face treatment are still meeting. So smaller groups, less groups, but we've been able to continue all of our students in our curriculum. We are pushing students out as scheduled out into clinical um, sites. And we've so far, I'm going to knock on some wood, kept uh -huh. everybody on track yeah. for so far, so good. to be to graduate and to continue in the program. So we've been working really hard to make sure that happens. Part of what we did too for the, for the graduate students who were coming back is we made sure, you know, that everybody's educated on COVID, on, on how it's spread, and we've made sure to create kind of our own isolation bubbles, right, to make sure people aren't traveling and intermingling too many, too much with, you know, the rest of the campus or residence halls. Most of the graduate students at that second year graduate level actually do live off campus because they will be transitioning to full-time clinicals. Um, so that's kept us safe and isolated, I think. And the other component of that is in, in the field of physical therapy. We have all of our colleagues that are still providing physical therapy in, in their outpatient settings or in hospital settings or nursing homes. So our goal is to educate our students of how do you be a practitioner when you've got to be really careful and prevent the spread of a disease or an infection or any number of things that are out in the community. So has it affected our students? Yes, we are not doing as much face-to-face, -face, but we are still doing and um, meeting the goals and objectives of the program and getting students ready to be out in the clinic. Great question. Um, do you guys know when you guys are gonna have uh, college visits again? I believe you can schedule visits through our admissions site. We are not doing individual visits within the PT department because we're, again, if we're doing anything face-to-face, -face, we don't want our students interacting with a bunch of different people. But I believe our admissions office, because I've seen some tours on campus on the couple of days that I'm on campus, that they are in fact doing live tours. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Jonah, where are you from? I'm from Long Island, New York. Oh, we got two Long Islanders. Long Island, one Staten Island. I would, oh, that, they okay. would say it's not the same thing. Some Island. <laughs> New York. <laughs> Sorry, that's my that's my Springfield, Massachusetts bubble. Well, um, right. But if you haven't reached out to one of the admissions counselors, use the link in the chat, and they will help set something up for you. All right. Thank you. Great. What else? There must be other questions. When you're getting your bachelor's degree, do you find there are any comp more complementary minors for physical therapy? Good so question. I think my opinion is that everything relates to physical therapy. <laughs> <laughs> there is not a minor out there that doesn't relate to physical therapy. We have had students that have done a dance minor because they love to dance. So it was a personal interest. And yes, dancers need physical therapy, right? You move in certain ways. The more you understand that, the more it pertains. Business minors, we have um, a rehab and disability minor. We have psychology, which is huge. You have to understand people and how to communicate and how to motivate them. Yep. I had a student that was a math minor. Now, I don't know about you, math is not my thing, but it was their thing and they loved math. And, and they thought, I just, I wanna keep taking math courses because it really helps me stay calm and I enjoy it. I was like, okay, math minor it is, right? Or a biology minor where you're doing more science work. Uh, um, it doesn't necessarily have to parallel with physical therapy, because it should be something that you're really interested in. And, and that's, I think, the bottom line for the minor. It's, it's, 
doesn't have to be all about physical therapy. It has to be about something that you'd like to get more information on and, and get more interested in. Oh, art. I have an art minor, yeah. right? How fun is that? And again, it was something that this student, it relaxed them. It made them use a creative side of their brain that the sciences don't necessarily use that creative part of your brain as much. And, um, and then decided that, that that might be something they'd put into their PT practice because it allowed people to relax and think differently. So it's more it of It all a, works. Yeah, yeah. I had another thought for you guys when I can't, oh, AP courses or mm -hmm. um, any courses if you're taking at a community college or if there's a linked program with your high school, those courses will also transfer in. Uh, we do have different levels of, of if you're taking the AP exam and you have to score either a three or a four on that to get credit for some courses. Other courses, it's not as high. So if you're taking any of those courses, absolutely make sure that information comes to Springfield College because we do use, we do give you credit for that. All right. Are there any? I have a question. Good. Is Go there a certain maximum of AP courses or dual enrollment credits you can transfer in? Sort of, not really. <laughs> so in the physical therapy program, we only allow um, 11 transferred for our prerequisite sciences. For instance, if you took AP Bio, AP Chem, and AP Physics, and you scored high in it, you didn't have to take those on our campus, you would still have to take some of them on our campus. Right? You couldn't just say like, boom, done the sciences, I'm just gonna move right on. I think it's like 11 credits worth, right? right. So you could choose which of those you wanted to apply. Yeah, otherwise, if you, I have a student that transferred in 27 credits, I believe, in their freshman year from coursework that they were taking through a college collaborative. And things like psychology or history or writing, all of those transfer in and you would get credit for them. And that would just decrease the amount of the gen eds that you would need to take and you'd have more time to focus on the sciences. Good, great questions. You guys have been great. Any last questions? How many applicants do you get a year? Oh, great one. Uh, we typically have about 300 applicants. We accept between 80 and 90 students, and that typically gives us a yield of about 45 to 50 students. Are you doing the math? <laughs> I'm just writing it down. I, I was going to say, Matthew, that's it. You got the math part. I'm all done. <laughs> great, great. Anything else? This has been a fun session. I'm, I'm glad it was a little quiet. Not too many, but Michaela, did you have a question? Um, what sciences do you like to see from high school students as they come into the program? Um, great. So if you're going, oh no, you would be in your senior year. So if you're not in your senior year, or if you have um, a choice, our students typically don't like physics on our campus. So if you can take a physics course in high school, just to get some of that background knowledge and have some foundation, um, students have found that to be really helpful. If your school doesn't offer an AP physics, but they offer AP anatomy and physiology. And that's really interesting because it is, you know, and you decide to take that, that's fine. We really don't, 
push one versus the other. Um, we encourage students to take pre-calculus, again, because it's a requirement on our campus as well. So if math is not your thing, if you're like me, I don't know how I did it way in the back in the day, but I did. Um, then to, to try to take some of those harder courses so that you have some foundation coming into the program. All right. And Excellent questions. You guys have been fabulous. And, and you all got rid of your parents. What's that? I, I probably shouldn't say that when I'm recorded. <laughs> <laughs> you know. have parents that want to know some things, but you guys have covered, I think, pretty much everything. Good job. Yeah. I have one more question. Sure. You know, like the relative GPA of like the incoming class last year? I'm going to say there. So let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you a story. You put your application into the computer and our admissions office looks at all the coursework you've taken and they, they kind of grade it. So if you've got six AP courses versus someone that did just their regular high school courses, your GPA gets bumped up based on all of that. And I believe the high schools do the same thing when they calculate that. So I would say most of our students were at a 3.5 or higher once that was all recalculated. That's something I, it's, it's the magic sauce. I laugh all the time. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how it happens, but it comes to me all recalculated. So that when I look at an application, you're all kind of on the same playing field. Great questions. You guys are thinking. I know, these are like parent questions. Did you guys get a list before you came on the Zoom? List of questions. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to Excellent. stop recording.